Okay, today we're going to try to show you the disassembly of an MK1919 and cutting of the stock, which we will cut right here. And we'll cut the hand grip off to install an aftermarket AR-15 style hand grip. First off, uh, you get a 3mm wrench, Allen wrench, and you take out these two bolts that hold the front side on right here. Also, probably a good idea to loosen this set screw up here so you don't scratch the barrel as this slides off. It's just plastic and it comes right off. Uh, and loosen the forend nut. Set that aside, you'll need that later. Take off the factory forend. You can throw that away as far as I'm concerned. Loosen your Barrel nuts here. It goes off. Those aside, and you're ready to pull the barrel. It's a good idea to hold the action back slightly as you're pulling the barrel out. And ease it up close very softly whenever you get the barrel out and I'll show you later there's two feed lips in here that you do not want to damage if you let the bolt slam forward right down here at the bottom but we'll show you that later there your barrels off uh, we'll also show you what we do to take the guide rod out that's fairly easy because we have to remove this plate to install the tooth and nail armory forend all of our mounting hardware is contained underneath the forend. Gives you a lot better look than that. Uh, you get a Phillips screwdriver. These two holes are some bolts. Uh, wood screws basically what they are. Uh, I'll remove the butt plate. You also need a six millimeter hex, and it goes way down the bottom there to take the upper assembly off. Uh, you might want to not back that out all the way. The owner's manual recommends backing it off a few turns, taking a rubber soft mallet and striking it to separate the upper and lower. They're fairly tight on some, on new guns so you might want to try that a little bit. Take a couple of wax you can see it don't take much. Sometimes you can pull them apart without tapping anything. Sometimes you need to tap a few times but and then that is the bolt that comes out you will not need that as well set that aside here's one from the previous job you're ready to separate the upper and the lower um, it's a good time you can all take this bolt handle out you center the bolt in this recess there it'll pop right out bolt and your bolt carrier comes out and take that out before or after and your spring comes off the guide rod uh, and next we'll show you how to take this guide rod out some are very tight some are pretty loose and uh, so that will be the next stage in this video all right many people do not have a padded vise so i'm going to show you how you can do it with common things that most people have around their shop if you have a padded vise that is great you do not have to use one you can pad your vise with I usually prefer cardboard over a piece of cloth uh, if you're gonna do that because sometimes the cloth can transfer if you've got serrated vise jaws that can transfer through into the aluminum on the 
receiver. But you can put it in with some cardboard padding. It doesn't have to be extremely tight, just enough to hold it. Here's the tool that we use. Uh, it's called a stud extractor. Makes taking this guide rod out extremely easy. As you'll see, uh, some people struggle with that. And some of them are extremely tight. Some of them are, are very loose. Uh, put that on here. And there we go. See the factory backing plate is coming off with it. That's just fine. And there, pull that off. Thread your guide rod out. You can see they cake this pretty good with Loctite, and some some are just got Loctite running down them, and others are, don't have any. You can take them out by hand. So depends on who was working the factory that day. And discard this piece as well. You won't need that anymore. Okay, we're ready to cut the stock off. We've made a little jig that we use out of a miter gauge and we do it on the bandsaw. Um, this is the easy way to do it. Some of you will do it with a hand saw. Uh, I would probably recommend a fine tooth hacksaw blade. You take and put some painter's tape, uh, or masking tape around the stock to give you a cut line that kind of give you an idea of when you're cutting it what to go by. Um, so you put your jig in here. You want to cut first cut we about 0.8 or 0.85 from the back of the receiver. So you can see that right there. So that's uh, approximately where we cut. First cut then you can make a test fit. We put it in here, just it's all squared up uh, off of the rail. If your reason we do this, if your rail is screwed up on your gun, you got more problems than cutting the stock wrong. So we strip everything down, put it in this little jig, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Final cut. Now the jig. Hang out a few of the burrs on here. A little dressing up with some sandpaper. There you go. Or not sandpaper, a file. Dress that up, clean all the burrs out of here, and you'll have a nice fit you here on this one uh, this this one's cut just a little bit longer than we normally do that's a 0.91 just to show you how accurate the jig is from down here where you got an actual reference line you can reference we've got 0.982 on this side Point nine eight one. So if that's not accurate enough for your stock, I'm not sure you're going to get any better than that. Uh, any other way you do it. So take a few of the little rough burrs off. You can use that lightly with a file or sandpaper. Uh, it doesn't take much. There's the inside of the injection mold. Uh, you can see this right here is your where the receiver bolt goes in. You can see the bosses on here have got to be made to set inside here. As you can see, I don't know if you can see the depth or not. There's a little bit of a little bit of room for error. We like to have you cut the last cut at 0 0.06 from here, 0 0.065, something like that. That gives you just a little bit of room if you do actually mess up your final cut uh, there you go and you tighten that down got a nice clean fit right there so that's how to cut your stock and put on a 
stock adapter. Okay, we're going to cut the grip off for an AR-15 grip and put the adapter in. I'm going to cut approximately one quarter of an inch from the front side here. So you're going to be cutting right along this area here to get the one quarter of an inch. And then you'll be cutting right along the bottom this way on this one. Uh, so let's see what happens. All right, you're better off to be a little safe than sorry here. Uh, you can always file a little bit off. It's not that hard to dress it up to make it fit nice. Um, and that's... Something I forgot to mention earlier as far as uh, getting this receiver square other than using the Picatinny rail. I'm not sure if they did this intentionally in the factory or not, but all the ones we've measured have been within one thousandth from this area to here. So that that is within one thousandth of being flat so you can use that as well as a way to square up the receiver so you can keep that flat on the table and we'll go ahead and try and cut this and leave a little room for filing as I said before you can cut right along just below this almost uh, if you can see the, the last groove there is about where we like to cut and then file the rest to fit. I don't have a nifty little jig made up for this one yet, but it's not that hard to freehand. There you go, nothing like taking a $700, $800 gun and cutting it into little pieces. So uh, I'll do a little filing and drop the grip adapter in. I'll take the upper receiver back off, but uh, drop that in and we'll see how she works out. Okay, it's not too bad a fit. We've got to take a little bit more off here and round and radius this. So we'll go ahead and make one more cut. Don't cut all the way up on this time so you can radius this to fit. Uh, you might want to look at your actual grip that you have and see whether it's a square cut or radius and make this final cut right here accordingly. and filing and see what the final result is. Right, after a little bit of filing it's got it smoothed up and we're ready to put the grip adapter in. It's a drop in piece. There we go. Let's if I can get the bolt started. Tighten it up, and there you have it. One thing I don't like is the MKA, depending on the grip you got, you some will have a bigger gap back here than others. You can cut this at a little bit of an angle here, will help close that up, but then it'll also kick your grip back a little bit. So you'll have to use your own judgment on that. Uh, and there you got your AR-15 grip, and you're ready back in business. The bottom end.